and welcome to Hard Copy, coming to you from our studios in Abuja. I'm Maokwe Ogun Yusuf. A very passionate SOS from journalist Kadri Ahmed, who is among a number of protesters from Zamfara, who took to the streets of Abuja recently to call attention to the security situation in the northwestern state. They're not the only ones who've started to bring to the fore in recent times the dire security straits the state has found itself in for some time now. Senator Kabir Marafa, representing Zamfara's Central Senatorial District, has also called attention to the problem many times on the floor of the Nigerian Senate. In February this year, he lost his elder sister to the banditry and impunity which has gone rife in the state. Now, he is calling for a 10 billion naira intervention fund from the federal government to stem the humanitarian crisis emerging from the situation. He's our guest tonight on Hard Copy, and we begin by asking him if he's satisfied with the recent measure by the federal government banning all mining activity in Zamfara State. At the moment, the killings that are taking place in Zamfara are more than the killings taking place in Borno, more than the killings taking place in Adamawa and Yobe. These are states that are officially at war. Every day, we bury between 30, 40, 50 people. When we are not burying people, we are selling everything we own to pay kidnappers 15, 20 million. Mr. President has not done well for the people of Zamfara. The people of Zamfara love Mr. President. The people of Zamfara came out in 2015 to vote for Mr. Mr. President. Despite their hardship, they came out again in numbers in the just concluded elections to vote for Mr. President. Why is Mr. President treating the people of Zamfara as if they are not citizens of Nigeria, deserving of security, deserving to live in their houses and sleep well? Why? This is why we are here today. We demand that Zamfara is made secure. We demand that Mr. President acts like the chief uh, commander-in-chief that he is of the armed forces of Nigeria. All these soldiers here should not be guarding one man. They should be in Zafara fighting kidnappers and rustlers and the armed bandits that are killing our mothers, our fathers and our sisters. That is what we demand. We don't really care if Mr. President is distributing 10,000 naira, if he's giving people trader money, if he's giving people money. If there is no life, there is no business. You need to understand his first job is to provide security in this country at the moment he is not providing it the leaders in the north have let us down we don't have leaders all the northern governors put together are not are not talking about the fact that the north has gone to the dogs so we the people have decided to take our lives into our hands and come and protest and we will keep protesting until something is done because enough is enough Senator Kabir Marafa, welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you, Mwape. Interestingly, Zamfara State has been in the news in the last couple of days, well, almost every day in the last couple of days, not for very good reasons. The security situation in your state has escalated almost beyond what people say, you know, is under control. Uh, are you satisfied with the steps taken so far to address the security situation in your state? Well, one cannot uh, say he is satisfied with uh, measures taken uh, until the results are out. <clears throat> we would be satisfied uh, with a better Zamfara, uh, the Zamfara state that uh, we used to know, uh, the Zamfara state where uh, people can enter their houses and sleep, the Zamfara state where people can roam about freely. Do you think that the problem is well understood with the measures that have been taken so far? The ban on mining activities. Do you, what was the link between uh, mining activities and the banditry which we saw in Zamfara State? Zamfara State, as uh, we were told and read, uh, is sitting on very huge natural resources. And uh, most of it, I think uh, that people pay attention to today is gold. And uh, <clears throat> because of uh, the presence of these solid minerals, now there is a lot of uh, mining activities going on, uh, albeit illegally. Uh, because of uh, the cheap money that uh, people are used to from oil, uh, both federal 
government and maybe the state government uh, has not uh, maybe put interest you know in mining uh, these minerals for the betterment of uh, all Nigerians so they said nature upholds vacuum <clears throat> so in the absence of uh, regulated mining activities uh, you find out that people go out to do illegal mining uh, some <coughs> to a large extent, may be illegal. Now, <clears throat> what baffles uh, people, especially the people of the Amfara State is, now while these activities are going on, especially by some highly placed individuals, <clears throat> big companies, you know, carrying out these activities in these uh, remote areas of the state, where sometimes you hardly see anybody. Now, the activities goes on for all this period, you know, unabated and uh, without any casualty. They have large sites with sometimes expatriates, you know, carrying out these activities. And you have never had a single uh, incident of kidnap of any of their staffs. They are going about doing these things. But when you come, uh, even where villages that are very close to the main road, now people are being molested, kidnapped, women raped, day in, day out. You kidnap people that uh, don't have, that are not even sure of what to eat, you know, eight hours after. And uh, you demand for ransom. Most of these people have to sell uh, their farmlands, maybe the uh, livestock and so on to pay for this ransom. If you look at the history of uh, this solid minerals uh, politics, you look at DR Congo and other countries. Now, <clears throat> the theory is, now for them to continue to excavate these minerals peacefully without doing this, they have to scare the locals. Then from scaring them to wiping them out completely. And if you do that, <clears throat> now you have a field day where you have large expanse of land that you can even build airports, you know, and carry out your activities without uh, uh, any hesitation. Given the fact that before now we heard it was about herdsmen who were coming into Zamfara, the, 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 the crisis was between those who were coming into Zamfara from outside the country, still in the cattle of the local people. Sometimes they have to pay these people to be able to get their cattle back. Uh, you know, even those people were collecting taxes, so to speak, from the local people. Before we now began to get this angle of mining uh, from the federal government. It keeps transforming from one thing to the other. It started with cattle rustling, uh, where these people may be that uh, uh, we alleged that uh, foreigners come in, yeah, rustle these cattle for money. Now from rustling to one ton killings and uh, destruction that you cannot explain. <coughs> because if you are killing somebody to take his goods or something or his possessions, then you can understand why this man is killed. Because maybe uh, he is fighting somebody that wants to dispossess him of his belongings. Now to one ton killings without anything like there's a village that was attacked on a market day and about 250 people killed within th two, three hours. And uh, you just cannot explain that. <clears throat> then from that one to kidnapping, <clears throat> and the kidnapping of <clears throat> poor people and uh, burning down a whole village <clears throat> completely without taking anything and doing nothing. So the, the thing is, maybe it started... Uh, as a means of business, you know, by some people from somewhere, only God knows, I don't know. Then it now transformed into, uh, maybe, or let me put it this way, maybe some people hijacked it, you know, that supplies these people with arms, because where are they getting the money to buy all these arms, even if they have the money, where are the arms coming from, and so on and so forth. So when you look at the two, you try to marry them together. You see that uh, the jigsaw, you know, fits in. Because why are you uh, leaving this man who is almost 
unprotected because they don't have military uh, people guiding them or policemen guiding them or whatever. And everybody knows what they are doing. Like I told you, if you take one kilogram of gold, it's better than chasing maybe uh, 10 villages or 10 communities. You can't get anything from them. So why are they being attacked? While these people, <clears throat> you know, live happily within the same neighborhood without molestation, without kidnapping, without being killed or anything. The theory is that uh, maybe <clears throat> it is intended to frighten these people to a point where they would not even uh, be interested in what these people you know, are taking from their backyards. The Minister of, uh, of Defence, Mr. Sudan Ali, who happens to be from Zamfara State, has been speaking. He also thinks the traditional rulers could be involved in this. He's accused the traditional rulers of being involved in this. How do you respond to that? Uh, like I told you, there are so many theories about this thing. <clears throat> and uh, one of it we have just discussed about the miners. Now, the second thing is, <clears throat> we are living in a society today that worships money. Now, here <clears throat> is an enterprise that almost guarantees people of making money. And that is why whenever people talk about herdsmen, I always caution them, even in the chamber. Give these people the name they deserve. And these people are not alone. You may say they are foreigners. Fine. Maybe about 5, 10, 20, 100 foreigners that came in. But definitely there are locals that they have employed now because of this money issue. They have the money to pay people. And uh, they have been carrying out these nefarious activities without uh, deterrence from anybody. So people keep joining. So now, including the traditional rulers, they are human beings, they are Nigerians. Uh, maybe if government has sufficient information. I'm a lawmaker. Uh, I don't have access you know, to security information. So I would not want to say, yes, so-so uh, traditional ruler and so-so. But it's a common knowledge in Zamfara that there are traditional rulers that are involved. There are clerics that are involved. There are politicians that are involved. There are common men that are involved. But the truth of the matter is, it is now <clears throat> uh, like a loop, you know, of so many people and uh, that are bounded together by the gains you know, from distance. And these are some of the problems that made some of us to accuse government, state government, you know, of laxity and uh, having even a hand in this uh, uh, problem. You have what accused the state government of having I did. a hand I did. I in, did. In openly, this. Openly in the, in the, uh, uh, on the floor of the Senate. I said that the government has a hand in this uh, nefarious activities. How? I said it. Yes, because... <clears throat> I used to say that is this uh, popular uh, proverb, is it a proverb or an adage uh, by the Europeans? <clears throat> when they were fighting, uh, I can't remember the group uh, they call themselves. Uh, the, it's, it's a group that, uh, you know, they tax themselves to protect uh, endangered species, especially in Africa. So people were taking tusk, uh, hide, skin, and whatever to, of this endangered species. And... Uh, <clears throat> The Europeans tried to stop the trade, and it became impossible. You know what they did? They went back to their parliament, you know, and they enacted laws. They simply said that when the buying stops, the killing will stop. They stopped buying. They criminalized buying of such, such uh, so and so so items from anybody. And when Africans found out that they cannot take these things to Europe and sell, they have to stop killing the animals. So in like the same way. <clears throat> Now, the informants are largely known in Zamfara. Any village you go to and you ask them, who are the informants from this village? People can volunteer information to you. Once they know that they are protected, their fear is once you point to somebody, he will be arrested today. After a couple of uh, days, he is released. And uh, the next thing is you are killed. Mm. Because he will go back and tell these people that so-so person, uh, you know, reported him. Now, these people are lords unto themselves. I've said it on the floor of the Senate, that they advocate between people. They are the ones that uh, there is no traditional authority in Zamfara to be as I'm talking to you. The police are handicapped. The courts are handicapped. They can come to the town and pick anybody's daughter, 
you know, and uh, <laughs> keep her in the bush, you know, for their own use. And nobody can do anything. That is how bad the situation is. And all these people that are doing all these things, most of them are on the payroll of government. Are Amias not on the payroll of government? I see. Do you, do you get what I mean? Are they not on the payroll of government? They are in the payroll of government. And they are carrying out distance. And you know them. Can't you sanction them? Thank you.